next on Coastal Today, our special graduation show. Five graduating students tell us about their coastal experiences, the internships, research, and activities that will shape their futures, and what's on the horizon beyond university life. Now your host, Robin Russell. Hello and thank you for joining us. I'm Martha Hun, sitting in for Robin Russell for this special edition of Coastal Today. Today, we celebrate the class of 2013 by meeting several standouts as they step into the next chapter of their lives. Marine science graduate Olga Tweedy knows what she'll be doing over the next several years thanks to the solid foundation she has built through her work as an undergraduate here in CCU's College of Science. Olga was recently awarded the National Science Foundation Graduate Research Fellowship. Now that means a $90,000 stipend will allow her to perform some incredible research and Olga we welcome you to Coastal today. Thank you for having me here. Now according to the director of undergraduate research Rob Young he has said that this is really rare for an undergraduate to get this type of opportunity that you have so congratulations to you. <laughs> Thank you. How did you feel when you won this honor? Um, I tell you tr uh, truly I couldn't believe that I got it so I checked the website twice to be sure that it's like my name is really that. <laughs> Uh, but it was a very big surprise and I was a very, very happy impression with you. Very, very excited. And all the work you've done up until now is really paying off for you, isn't it? Yes, it uh, really does. Um, I work hard and I, I wish the best uh, and I got rewards for that. Absolutely. So that hard work is really paying off for you. Now, um, you've had some really unique experiences here at Coastal, and I'm just kind of going to walk through those. You presented in Washington, D.C. at the Undergraduate Poster on the Hill event. What was that like for you? Um, it was a very unique experience. Um, it's, it's not like a very usual um, um, conference. Uh, um, I had the chance to meet representatives at Senate and uh, in the House of Representatives, and uh, I looked inside. Um, U.S. government, they don't know how it's work, uh, what, what work of it. And also I had a chance uh, to tell uh, about my undergraduate e experience and how undergraduate experience is important for um, universities like Coastal Carolina and uh, other state universities in the state. Well, I know you were just a wonderful ambassador for Coastal Carolina University, and we thank you for doing that. Now, you also were a visiting scientist at the National Center for Atmospheric Research in Colorado. You were a lead author of an article submitted to the Journal of Geophysical Research, and your undergrad research was with Professor Var Limpa Suvin, and you studied wintertime ozone variation. Wow, so much. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah. Um the purpose of my research was to investigate how uh, variations in, uh, wi in wind circulation near the pole uh, can affect uh, ozone in the higher levels, uh, like 16, 80, 90 miles above uh, sea level. So we looked at data from model and we compared these um, results to observations uh, from satellites mm -hmm. uh, provided by NASA. And we just um, kind of found connections between uh, this uh, wind circulation near the pole and ozone. That is important research, isn't it? <laughs> it it does makes you feel good <laughs> to be doing that kind of work in, as an undergrad, doesn't it? Yeah, um, I really appreciate it for, for opportunities to perform research uh, as undergraduate. What's your favorite experience here at Coastal? Uh, my favorite experience at Coastal is uh, to do work, uh, to work on research projects uh, and uh, uh, as outcome of this research, uh, uh, I really like to present my results to different public, both uh, um, scientific and non-scientific public. So I had the experience uh, at Capitol Hill, on Capitol Hill, uh, to show results um, to reporters and to senators, uh, um, and also like to present to own public, like uh, very like scientists. I could. Uh, introduce my results to uh, very, very important scientists in the field and mm -hmm. it is uh, kind of nice to get re um, response back. And again, very important work that you're able to go to Washington and vocalize what's important in your work. And we thank you for that and we're looking forward to your doctorate work at Johns Hopkins University and Olga, we just hope you'll stay in touch with us so that we can keep track of your career. Absolutely. <laughs> Congratulations on thank your you graduation. Very much. Up next, a marketing graduate and a Wall Fellow who says trusting her instinct was one of the most important lessons that she has learned. Stay with us for more Coastal Today.
office is a movie set, and my acting career began at Coastal Carolina University. Begin your path to prominence today by applying online. Welcome back to Coastal Today. This special edition features graduating seniors. They have valuable experiences to share from their studies at CCU that prepare them for their next step in life and in learning. Miranda Rios is a marketing and management graduate whose internship took her to the other side of the state to AVX Corporation in Greenville. Well, Miranda, good to see you. Good to see you too. Tell us about this experience with AVX. Well, I worked at AVX for two consecutive summers, so my first summer there I was doing a lot of um, data, number crunching, and forecasting type stuff in the marketing department. And I came back for my second summer and I was doing some different type things with the vice president of marketing. Um, so they were two completely different experiences, but um, it was... It was a great experience overall. <laughs> so the data and stats kind of helped build you to understand better your next step with the VP of marketing, didn't it? Mm -hmm, exactly. The first summer I was learning more about kind of just systems and how the systems work with the company. And then my second summer I was able to apply everything that I learned with those systems to actual the functioning of the marketing department. How wonderful is mm -hmm. it that you were able to really get into the meat of the matter mm -hmm. with a with a pretty large company? I mean, AVX is pretty big. Yep. <laughs> now, a lot of times internships will help us to understand more certainly what we want to do in our career. Is that the same for you? Yeah, it actually is. Uh, working at AVX made me realize that I'm not quite sure if going the manufacturing route is for me, but it was a very valuable experience. I learned a lot of things that I still apply to everything I do. So. It was an excellent experience overall, but I'm not sure if going the marketing route is quite for me. Okay, and it's interesting because right now you're working in internship and human mm -hmm. resources for a real estate firm, which is mm -hmm. completely different. <laughs> What's that teaching you, Miranda? It's teaching me about how the human resources function of a company works, and the great thing about it is that the HR portion of a company works with every side of the company, works mm -hmm. with operations, works with all types of different management, down to every single person in the company. So it's just been an excellent experience and it's made me realize that that's the route I really want to go with my career. Wow, so <laughs> small company or large company right now, this, this um, real estate firm? Um, it's a smaller company, so uh -huh. it's quite different going from AVX, such a large corporation, to a smaller company. So it's much different. <laughs> now, um, you said to a producer in an email that you, the most important thing, most meaningful thing you've learned as an experience here at CCU is to trust your instincts. How mm -hmm. so? I learned that by um, just pretty much no one knows what's right for you except for you. So if someone's trying to you know, tell you to do something, you know, give you good advice, this will be great for you. Um, Definitely think about it before you do it because only you know what's right for you. So um, that's something that I definitely took away from my experience here at Coastal. It's just trusting my instinct and going with my gut. <laughs> wow. And so the internship now doing HR is really carrying that, you know, all the way where mm -hmm. your, your instinct is that you really like those elements of people working with people, making a better workplace, right? Mm -hmm. And you wouldn't have known that had it not been for this internship at a small real estate firm. Exactly. What's next for you? What's next? I There possibly could be an opportunity with the company I'm working for now, so I'm really hoping for something there. And also I do hope to obtain an MBA in the future and okay. hopefully with a concentration in human resources. So I'm not sure if I want to do it right away, but I'm definitely going to go back and get the MBA at some point. That <laughs> is fantastic. Oh, <laughs> great. Well, Miranda, congratulations Thank to you, you so much. for all you've accomplished. And you may have to come back here for that MBA. <laughs> I hope so. That'd be great. <laughs> I'll miss Coastal a lot. <laughs> well, we will miss you, but you stay in touch. Thank you so much. And up next on Coastal Today, you'll learn how one student's research might impact how you seek your next job. We'll be right back. Coastal Carolina University delivers a $300 million impact to our local economy, is responsible for the existence of more than 4,000 jobs, and CCU students, faculty, and alumni positively impact our community's quality of life each day. 
So no matter your color, the power of teal is undeniable. Learn more about CCU's significant community impact at CoastalConnects.com. Your community, your university. What is a Chanticleer? Just ask Coastal Carolina University alumni. Coastal Carolina University gave me the tools to inspire young minds and prepare the next generation. And she's a Chanticleer. Major League Baseball is my business, and I'm a Chanticleer. How many college students gain a world of experience in international banking before they graduate? I did, and I'm a Chanticleer. Start your journey as a Chanticleer. Learn more at coastal.edu. Welcome back. You've probably heard the saying, you never get a second chance to make a first impression. You may also know that personal appearance does play a role in whether or not you get hired for a job. Well, our next graduate is a psychology sociology double major who took this concept several steps further. Jamie Glass, welcome to our graduation edition of Coastal Today. Thank you. Now, I'm really excited to hear more from you about your research. I took a look at it and I found it to be intriguing. Tell us what you studied. So I looked at 10 facial CEOs with differing facial width to height ratios. We all know when we go in for a job interview, we're rated on our appearance, our handshake, even our resume. And those are conscious things that we're rated on. However, the interview subconsciously looks at our facial measurements too. And these are things we don't think about. So this, this the implications for this are very important. So I looked at 10 CEOs. My participants rated the CEOs on whether or not they would hire a CEO with a low facial width to height ratio or a high facial width to height ratio. And I found that the participants rated the CEOs with the high facial width to height ratio as more as better CEOs most of the time. So that's wow. very important. It's very important in the workplace. Um, so does that mean we know, need to go get like plastic surgery? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> now these are things that we can't control. They are, right. We are born with. And I only looked at male CEOs. There is research though that supports the idea that females have a differing facial measurements that give them advantages as well. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so who was the CEO who ranked the most hireable? His, he job. was the CEO of a, an insurance company in New York. Okay. Um, and he was actually the youngest of all the CEOs. Ah. So it was interesting to see how the youngest CEO was rated as the best CEO for hire. And the, the oldest CEO was the worst CEO oh, rated. That's kind of scary. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> now, your faculty mentor on this project is Terry Pettyjohn. Yes. And he does some very unique research. We've interviewed him many times on Coastal Today. How did that inspire you and help you? He's a very interesting researcher. He has very unique ideas and that just inspired me to to create research that was unique and that's that's what's going to be more interesting to the to the public. So I created a research project that would be interesting to me and the public as well. And his ideas and definitely inspired me throughout my throughout the process of my research. And then your research also played into the economy yes. and how the economy affects hiring as well. Yes, so when economic conditions are insecure or harsh, we tend to have different preferences as compared to when they are stable and secure. And research has showed that even things that we buy, our movie preferences, even popular actresses and celebrities, we tend to prefer different facial measurements of these celebrities during different economic times. So that's why <laughs> wow. I wanted to apply it to the workplace and to see what I could find. Gotcha, mm -hmm. gotcha. And so you'll be applying this to the workplace in the future perhaps? Hopefully. Uh, I hope to research maybe women, uh, the more women CEOs that the more that women CEOs get into the workplace, the more I can research them and even multiracial faces too to see if that has an effect on whether 
whether or not they're hired during stable or unstable times. So that sounds more like PhD bound. Uh, yes, and that's where I'm <laughs> headed next, hopefully. Well, thank you so much for being a part of this. Thank you so much for having me. And congratulations on earning your degree. Thanks. When we come back, meet a health promotions graduate who used her nutrition knowledge to study the dietary habits of student athletes. More Coastal Today when we come back. It's about saving our oyster beds. Salinity's 33. It's about cleaner water. 25.2. It's about our research. Coastal Carolina University, it's about you. One might think that athletes have to be pretty healthy to stay in great shape. CCU Health Promotions graduate Christine Poe put her nutrition knowledge to the test to study CCU's own Chanticleer athletes. Christine, we're so glad to have you in for this special graduation edition of Coastal Today. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Now you, you're graduating and you've done this wonderful research that has built up to now. Mm -hmm. What was it like doing this research and kind of explain your research to us? Well, right now I'm interning at the CCU Athletic Speed, Strength and Conditioning Department and what makes this so unique is that they've never had a nutrition program there before, which was to me a shock because, I, you know, like you said before, I thought CCU Athletics always had someone in nutrition always involved. So I was there to um, create something, try to put in some nutrition education here and there, try to fit it in as much as possible because athletes do have a really busy lifestyle. So Coach Joshua Stoner, he is the Director of Speed, Strength and Conditioning and he wanted me to come in and start a nutrition program from the ground up. And so knowing that we've never had a program here before, I decided to come up with a research program for my Swain Scholars research thesis about what do the athletes know? Do they eat well? Do they know anything about nutrition? So what I did was I sent in a survey um, for all the athletes to complete and it asked them questions about their habits and their nutrition knowledge and whether they've taken a formal nutrition class or not. And so my results show that those who have taken the class have better knowledge. So we're going to take that information, pass it on to the next intern and see what she can do with the results. Oh, that's really interesting <laughs> that it's going to continue. Then. It is, it is. So after me, I'm the first intern. There's going to be another nutrition intern in the summer and then hopefully it'll continue on to maybe where you can even hire a nutrition professional. Now, so. you know, your faculty mentor is Dr. Sharon mm -hmm. Thompson, yes, mm -hmm. and she's well known in the mm -hmm. community and yes. really across the state. Mm -hmm. What is it like and how important is it that you have that faculty-student relationship? Oh, I think it's so important, especially when it comes to research, because without her, I would have never been able to develop a hypothesis. I would have never been able to formally organize my data into something that's tangible and something that's able to present to the athletics and say, look, these are the results. And she was able to help me realize that these results can actually matter in a way that this can affect the future of CCU athletics. So without having her to guide me through every step of the way, I would have had it. I wouldn't able to have done it without her. So I'm just really thankful to have that relationship with her. And how did the student athletes respond to what you were doing, the questions you were asking? Mm -hmm. and the 
information you were gathering. Mm -hmm. Some of them, they were just like, for one thing, they were really shocked at how long the S or the questions were. Um, and it's hard because athletics um, really needs to focus on nutrition, and nutrition is such a broad subject. So it's hard to pinpoint um, specific questions, and that's why the survey had to be a little long. But a lot of them were really interested in what my results were. I see um, athletes in the weight room, and they were just, you know, telling me, oh, I took your survey, I took your survey, I can't wait to hear about the results. So it's really exciting to get that feedback because it is not a short essay or it's not a short survey at all so it's exciting to hear that and for now it actually puts them in a place where they're thinking more about it exactly they have more of an awareness of what they're putting into their body exactly and how they respond mm -hmm. physically mm -hmm. and it's really important it's something that we like to stress over at strength and conditioning is that nutrition affects your sports performance and that's one thing that I had included in my education I make little flyers that show what you eat affects how you play so if you put that in their minds that's going to really make them think about what they're eating so well congratulations mm -hmm. Christine on your great work thank we're, you so much we're real excited to hear mm -hmm. in the future about where your life takes you so will you stay in touch with us oh yes definitely I'll be in the area so I'm really excited fantastic thank you well up next on Coastal Today we'll continue our salute to CCU graduates you'll hear from a student whose prospects are pretty strong for playing professional soccer Stay with us for more of Coastal Today. This is a movie set, and my acting career began at Coastal Carolina University. Begin your path to prominence today by applying online. up with some of CCU's brightest as they cross over from CCU students to alumni. Kiartan Sigurdsson may be a challenging name for me to say, but there is no shortage of words to describe his performance on the soccer field and in the classroom. He's a Wall College graduate of business management and he hails from Iceland. And thank you so much for being with us, Kiartan. Did I get it right? Yeah, you got it <laughs> perfect. I mean, and I understand that you have been at CCU since 2011. And so you made a big decision to leave Iceland to come here. You were studying at the University of Iceland, right? Yeah, that's correct. What led to that decision? Uh, I just needed a new challenge, that's all. I mean, I'd been in, you know, Iceland for, I mean, studying in Iceland for 18 years or 17 years before I decided to come over here. So that was pretty much the reason behind that decision. You know, we have, we have a very loyal alumni group from Iceland. Did they persuade you or connect with you at all, or is this just something that was in your head? That's the funny thing. I, I had no idea we had that many alumni from Iceland before I decided to come here. I just went online and did some research and ended up at Coastal. And here you are. Yeah, and here I am. And so also, um, you're a bit of a poster boy for our international program, uh, Soccer in a Suit. You were part of a brochure. Tell us about your experience, actually, as a student athlete, because I'm really sure that brochure is going to get everybody to come over from Iceland. <laughs> yeah, that's what we're trying, at least. Yeah, but you know, being an you know a student athlete, it's it, it's not easy. You know, you have to have pretty good time management skills. And do you? In a way, yeah. I mean, when I came here, I didn't. But you know, after being here for two years, I've definitely developed some good time management skills, you know, we have two or three practices a day and try to, 
you know, schedule classes around that, do my homework and all that. It, it's not been easy, but you know, I made it work. You made it work. And so what taught you more of the time management? Was it your athletics? Was it your classroom work and business management or a combination? It was a combination, okay. I would say. You know, um, it wasn't, uh, I mean, I got a lot of help from the advisors, both at College of Business and uh, the athletic advisors to set everything up. And, you know, they've been so helpful and they've helped out a lot. That's probably one of the biggest, that's probably one of the biggest things that has helped me as a student here at Coastal. That relationship that yeah. you have with faculty. Now, I understand you're a pretty strong soccer player. You may even have a good shot at professional soccer. Tell us what's next, if that's going to happen for you. Um, my agent is kind of working on that for me right now. Ah, okay. I'm trying to find something somewhere in Europe. Like I'm hoping, hoping somewhere in, on the mainland in Europe, like Germany or some place like that. That's pretty exciting. It is. I mean, it would be a great experience, like doing that, because like, my thing is that I wanna have a girlfriend back in Iceland, and she wants to go to grad school in Europe, mm -hmm. and we kind of want to like try to combine both those things together. Okay. All right. And then eventually back to Iceland, maybe. Yeah. Eventually, I'll go to Iceland. I'll end up in Iceland. That's a great country. I love it. You do. Yeah. And you have your family and friends there. Yes, I do. All right. Well, we know that our Icelanders love coastal and have a great affinity for coastal. So even as you move on in professional soccer, we'll follow that. But we're going to see you over in Iceland because our president and, and first lady and Darla DeMont, several of those folks travel over there just about every year to be a part of your events that you have in Reykjavik. Yeah. That's true. I mean, I've seen some videos and some photos and all that, and I'm, I'm really excited to be part of that. Being Wonderful. a Coastal alumni, it's, it's a dream come true. Well, thank you so much for being a part of the program, and congratulations on uh, earning your degree. Thank you. Appreciate it. And thank you for watching Coastal Today, an inside look at Coastal Carolina University.